Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Stardom Review, a now weekly show where I and Andre here, Andre there, um, review the amazing Japanese wrestling company known as Stardom. I am Malba Collins. Over there is Andre C. Andre, how are you doing today? I'm doing absolutely wonderful. I got to watch some great Stardom over the last couple last few days. Mm-hmm. I, I got it done. I got finished last night, so. Yes, I skip. I skip. It's it's Sunday as we record this. I skipped the Royal Rumble to watch some Japanese women's wrestling, and I think I'm, I good personally choice. I made the good good decision because <laughs> I love me some Stardom, baby. <laughs> hey, as someone who watched the Rumble yesterday, I mean, you you probably made it a decent choice, but there were some pretty decent matches on there. Uh, you can check out some other uh, reviews, like on OLE. There we had Astrid Pizarro, uh, Bobby Munson. Uh, Chris Best, and there was a fourth one on there. Who was that? Was it Chris Parrish showed up? I think it was Chris Parrish. Maybe Parrish, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All of them showed up on OLE to to review the Royal Rumble there. So you'll want to check that out. Um, but yeah, the the women's rumble, Rhea Ripley winning that one, Andre. How impressive! I haven't watched is that? it yet. What the hell? <laughs> for me? Hey, I, if you I, hadn't, it's I, all over social media. I, no haven't, I haven't been on social media all morning except for messaging you. Well, spoiler <laughs> alert. How do you feel about I, that, Andre? I, I expected her to win anyway. So, but Same. again, a, a, a former stardom wrestler get goes goes and wins the Royal Rumble. Here, it's it's mm-hmm. all tying in. Rhea Ripley. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure Rhea Ripley was a former a wrestling stardom at one point early on. I'm fairly sure. We'll have to double check else. that. I, I don't I rightly know myself, but we'll have to check that out for sure. It's, it's that also wrestling. being said, yeah. Oscar. Um, showing up in the women's rumble clearly took a, a, a little chapter out of Fuki can death's um, <laughs> little Bible there. That face paint on her did not move. Super impressive. Super, super impressed with that. So oh, I'm wrong. Andre. She was not in stardom. I'm wrong. I'm thinking of somebody else. <laughs> I'm wrong. We'll but mix still, that and women, move on. <laughs> great, women's re- great women's wrestling. And well, and you, you got Oscar, she's a former, former stardom wrestler. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And as I said, that face paint didn't go anywhere. There you go. She kept it on there. But we are here to talk about stardom and the stardom tournaments that are happening right now. So we're going to be taking care of two shows today. We got the New Blood show that happened on January 20th. Um, that was kind of like a, it felt like a crossover between stardom and Diana. And then we also had uh, the 21st show, which was the Triangle Derby. So we are going to get into the first night here, which is the January 20th show, the New Blood show. There we go. This was so fun, Andre. Oh, I had a great time with this. Like it, it, it was very different, and it was a. It's the first round in the tag team title tournament too. Mm-hmm. That they're setting up the New Blood t- tag titles, which will be defended on New Blood shows, and it's for. From what I wrestle, it's from wrestlers that are newer, but Starlight Kids in this tournament, and that's where I'm very confused. Starlight Kids been around. Zaya Brookside. But Zaya Brookside was there for a slight bit, then left. She's mm-hmm. still technically new to stardom in a, in reality. New to stardom, but certainly not inexperienced. That's for sure. No, but <laughs> I look at it as new to stardom for these people, and that's where I got com- very mm-hmm. confused. So yeah, the new blood. It's new blood seven, by the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we started out with a match between Arena from Oedo Tai and mm-hmm. Marin, who is thirteen years old. Yeah, Marin. Yeah. And against a uh, eighteen or sixteen year old Rena. And I felt really like it was really weird watching a 16 year old beat up a 13 year old. Like, like, I mean, better in the ring than on the streets, though, right? Yeah, but it was still <laughs> awkward just watching this little 13 year old girl. And like, Rena dominated most of this match. Like, Moran got mm-hmm. some, some stuff in, but it was mm-hmm. Rena dominating throughout. And I, it just, it just felt weird just watching a little girl get beat up. At least when she, when Kenny Omega fought the little girl, he she just hit moves on him the entire time. Yeah, there, there was a distinct styling difference, I think, though, between yeah, very much and so. Rena in regards to this. But I, I felt that Mirren did her best to, to oh, yeah. try to kind of counter everything, throwing herself quite often um, with the crossbodies to take down Rena. Um, and they they oftentimes did work. Um, Rita's Rita's quite experienced in um, Oedo Tai, but like anybody, if you get 
um, hit off of the top there, your feet are coming out from underneath you. Mm -hmm. um, unless you're you and taking drop kicks from Waka, then you're probably not going over. Like you're just going um, like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, or just dusting off the shoulder. <laughs> yeah, this match, it, it was a little... It, for me, not having ever like I've heard of these matches with these little girls in them. I've never actually like seen mm -hmm. one personally. So yeah, it, it was um at, when, at first when I was like looking at that, I was trying to get over the fact that it was a literal child. Um, but I did feel that you know this is where the girls typically start and the age that they typically start in Japan. So you know, Mirin's. And, and she's been, like, when you look into her history, she's actually got, like, a fair amount of, of experience going on, this little girl. So, yeah, it, it was for me, as a North American typical viewer, a little, mm -hmm. little scary. A little scary. I was a little, yeah. a little scared. But I, at the end of it, I actually felt it was a really good opener and better than some yeah. of the other openers that we've seen with other shows. Yeah, and in the end, uh, Rena hits the gory special face buster into the, mm -hmm. in, and gets the pin. And it, like, like honestly, like I go in the bad match. I was just sitting there the entire time thinking, "This is a sixteen-year-old beating up a thirteen-year-old." <laughs> going, okay, at least it's not an adult beating a child. At least, yeah, yeah. Like I said, at least it's in the ring and not in the streets. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> oh, I messed up and missed a, a card. I think. Uh oh. Uh, well, match two is Ru Ruaka with. Uh, oh yeah, I have him. I, I have him out of order. So this, ah. it, so the originally it was supposed to be Lady C. So just ignore Lady C there. Uh, these are the original <laughs> cards, but it, until I think it was Mew something got taken out, and Lady C's replacing her in the in the tag tournament. So that's oh, where okay, okay. the change was. You'll see it cool. when the card comes up, anyways. But yeah, mm -hmm. I, this is what ended up being a singles match. Marika Kobashi versus Ruaka. This was like. This was very good. I really like Mar Mar Marika, Maraka, however you want to call it, Marika, in this match. A little mm -hmm. bit sloppy early on with the neckbreaker that mm -hmm. she hit on Maraka, and a couple of drop kicks that look very like eh. chaotic. Eh. Yeah, like well, no, <laughs> just like just barely touching, like just like just mm -hmm. like eh. and it just. But she she picked it up as as they went yes. right, like and it really good. Um, Raka with that running cross and that and then the senton right after. I I she does it in a mm -hmm. lot of revenge. It, it, it's so good. And then she oh, like and then the transition out of the pin into the cross face for her, mm -hmm. absolutely phenomenal. Um, mm -hmm. Marika with uh, get, uh, gets a roll up and a short DDT onto Raka. I, I really like just like it was like Alexa Bliss style where she has the opponent on her knees and mm -hmm. DDTs her down. I really like that style DDT. And really, I think worked perfectly for Mar Marika because at that the height she's at, it's like almost yeah. she's almost not bending over for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then um, Marika picks her up, goes and but she ends up getting run into the corner. And this is where Ruaka hits the tree slam and the splash off the top, picking up freezer the bomb. Wind. What was it called? Freezer bomb. Freezer bomb. I gotta change that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, freezer bomb. That's it's an like Doki's Daybreaker. It's one of those just awesome, perfectly named moves. <laughs> I don't know. I, that one confuses me, but okay. Daybreaker, <laughs> cool. That's just awesome. But freezer yeah. bomb, like where's the freezer in all this? That's a real question. <laughs> but I, um, I thought great match between both these women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, 100%. I actually really agree. Um, uh, Kobashi, um, Marika uh, Kobashi there, reminding me a little bit of uh, Hannah Kimura with her intro um, and her getup. It really, really made me like, oh, I love her. I, I just met her and I love her. Um, the Using uh, Ruaka at the beginning here, also using a handshake um, to kind of pull in Kobashi and jumpstart mm. that match. Very, very smart on Ruaka's part. Mm. Um the machine gun chops by Kobashi, I thought were, were actually very, very solid, um, reminiscent of Kenta Kobashi, who mm. also did very, very, very solid stiff machine gun chops. So appropriate name. I, I really enjoyed that. Um, there was one point where Ruaka actually had Kobashi um, in like a camel clutch, but she was like mm. holding her up by her little moon bonds. Yeah, what she had in, and um, what I noted on that one was when I really like—I oh, don't remember who else usually does it. I think it was Risa Sarah, 
who will um, take that and slam the person's face mm. into the mat right after that. Um, yeah. Ruaka holding the moon buns just plants Kabashi's face as she did not bounce. She just thudded. Mm. <laughs> that, I heard that one. That one that one made me yeah. kind of a little sick to my stomach. But yeah, that one, this was a very fun match. Just like you, I, I really enjoyed uh, Kabashi. And this was the first time I saw uh, Marika. Marika. This Kibashi. was actually her debut match. I looked it up. This was this wow, was really this was her well debut in Stardom. In she New Blood. For, in New Blood. Okay. I think she worked for Tokyo Joshi Pro before this. I can't. I can't yeah, remember. Who it was. Yeah. Yeah. But very, she, this is her. Good this good is her first like ever match. Yeah. This is her first ever mm -hmm. match here in Stardom, which is cool to see because, like, I I think mm -hmm. this girl has has potential. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. She's got the look. She's got the talent. Her facial expressions were very, very good throughout the entire match. She, from what I can see in the ring, she's definitely got that kind of actability to her. Mm -hmm. A very, very well-rounded wrestler. I look very much forward to seeing what else she does. Me too. And she's only going to improve from here too. Like absolutely. It, it start, stardom seems to only make people better. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're supposed to do. <laughs> so back, I'm going to back up here to the last card because I had them out of order. And it's <laughs> Wakaskiyama taking on mm -hmm. Nane Takahashi in a, another proving match for Waka. Because, again, they're trying mm -hmm. – Waka's trying to prove she can get a win here. And, and she has mm -hmm. yet to win in her entire stardom career so far. So right here, it, this was probably the match I enjoyed most on this show. Mm -hmm have to agree well it's just this I, I love the story of waka trying to prove herself and it's mm -hmm. in and, and honest nane wins with the frog splash off the top in the end mm -hmm. but them telling the story of waka trying so hard getting the the straight jacket chokes and the straight jacket slams and mm -hmm. the riding the back I, I guess I'm calling it the the Waka the Waka ride now. I'm see when she's on something back calling I'm just calling it the Waka ride at this point until I get an actual name for that thing. <laughs> but seeing her like getting all these, but just getting power, especially with like a, someone like Nani getting powered off and getting like mm -hmm. everything kind of getting reversed and getting just beat up. It's it, it's such a story I want to get behind because at first I was I had no care for Waka, but then once. I, I understood the story they were telling. I think it's where it really started to suck me in into Waka's story. And mm -hmm. I absolutely think this girl is she's she's won me over. Don't get me wrong. 100%. Mm -hmm. And it's just this story is good. And then Nane being the old vet that's just beating up on the new girl. I absolutely thought it was just the, it was the perfect story to tell here. The mm -hmm. old vet beating beating on the new the new kid. I thought it was great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this match actually was kind of um, one of the higher averages um, time match for this this show. It, it was um, almost 12 minutes long. Um, I loved, loved this. This was the match I was fully invested in and that I could not take my eyes off of from start to finish. Um, Waka started off really, really strong, coming in, just strike, 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 strike. strike. But um, Nane, I mean, her, just her size and experience. Um, was able to, you know, gain the upper hand back from Waka very, very easily um, throughout the entire match. Waka would have these incredible bouts where she just suddenly fires up and like goes super scion and starts coming back, and then Nani just essentially just goes, "No, sit down." <laughs> um, there was a a, um, a one point where every forearm Waka threw at Nani, Nani absorbed. Every single one, just not even like reacting. She was just sitting there going, "Come on, come on, come on." Yeah. Um. It. It would. I felt it was great because that the again only, told that story of the proving. What are you yeah, trying to say, Andre? Well, sorry. The only spot I had in here that I didn't care for was the drop kick spot, where she did seven in a row off the top. Oh yeah, off of every corner. Yeah, yeah. Was, I didn't like was, that either at the end it, there. Like after like. If there would have been like two or three, I probably wouldn't I have minded that. it. That's further down in my notes, sir. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, this is what talking about. I just, it, it just was odd. Like just the the fact, and Nane, like like on like two or three of them, was just standing there letting her bounce off, and it was just like, 
Well, let me get there. I'll get there. Sorry, I got a few more sorry. things to say before that one. Sorry, sorry <laughs> um, there was a, one part at the, the beginning there where Waka got leaned up against the, the bottom rope, very similar to how uh, Ruaka, as we had mentioned, does that flying crossbody um, while someone's kind of bent up on the, the bottom ropes there. Mm -hmm. um, Nane ended up doing that to her a few times. And there was also a time where she actually got Waka and just started feeding her strikes, 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 strikes. I was like, man, this is a child. Stop beating on her, Nane. You're a vet. Mm. You know better. Um, the Waka, okay, I, I have to ask you because I, I just know it as the Liv Morgan move. Is the move that Waka does off that second rope, the is that a second rope flatliner? What is that? Yeah, it's, I just call it the Liv Morgan flatliner because I don't actually okay. know what the move's called for Liv Morgan either. So it's just a second rope flatliner. Second rope flatliner. Um, Waka f set up and pulled that off on Nane picked her perfectly i i like she's done that move before and we've seen her do it before and just as picked her perfectly that seems to be the one signature that waka is really 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 good at and i really like seeing that because no one else in stardom does that she is the only no. one who does that same with her little piggyback arm bar thingamajiggy that she does i haven't seen anybody else do that either um so yeah the the, the drop kick thing that I have here um, says that she hit four effective ones. The fifth one started to fire up Nane, and it looked like she Samoa Joe'd her on the sixth one. Well, yeah. she just simply sidestepped it and was like, "What the frack are you doing?" <laughs> um, yeah, and then the seventh one, she just stood there and offered it to her after the sixth one. That one was a confusing spot for me, also. Yeah. Um, because I wasn't quite sure what it was that they were trying to accomplish with there because it didn't make Waka look stronger and it didn't make Nane look smarter. Like it didn't really, that spot didn't do anything for them. I felt it was just kind of like a time waster. Um, I would have liked to see something else in there instead. Um, but that being said, they kind of did a lot of everything else throughout the match. So yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure. I'm, I'm in the same boat as you. I don't know what to make of that um, little section. Um, there was uh, at one point where they were just slapping the crap out yeah. of each other. Um, five direct strikes on Waka's face. You saw her head just snap each oh, time. Where she, where she was like, just bang, bang, bang. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he, and then followed by... Um, um, Waka actually managing to get a rear choke on Nane yeah. and Nane had to fight through that hard. Uh, for me, mm -hmm. that was actually the point where I actually thought Mo Waka might actually have this. And then seeing yeah. Nina um, run to the, the ropes and like, you know, cheering her on, almost pushing the cameraman out of the way <laughs> to cheer on Waka made me feel so happy. Cause like, I don't think Mina or Tam Nakano were scheduled on the show. But both of them were there for Waka and in her corner. Yeah, and they were just there a seconds. Happens. They were just there a seconds for her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because like Sh Mina Shirakawa was in like some like fun disco ball shoes that I quite enjoyed that we can talk about later. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, yeah, it was it's really nice to see the the girls in the corner. Um, and then uh, yeah, Nani had that weird kind of STF thing too um, towards the end there that I really really enjoyed um, seeing her transition into. Um, but yeah, I definitely feel like we were, both of us were definitely fully invested mm -hmm. in watching this match. Um, I feel like this was probably the match that drew me in personally to this show. Yeah. yeah it, I, like going in, I thought like, it was like, in my, in my brain, it was going to be the club Venus match. It's going to be my, my match with it. Cause like, again, big <laughs> fan. I'm a big fan of club Venus. I'll, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll hardly admit that, but like this, like, and I didn't think this one was going to be like, I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. Walker versus Nana, Nana is going to beat her. That's what it, I went in with my brain, right? But then, like, <laughs> by the end of this, I was like, oh, Walker can win this. Like, I was, I was like, mm -hmm. I was like, come on, Walker, let's go. And then she loses it, but I was like, holy crap, that oh. was amazing. Like, I, it, yeah. like, like everything they did, the, the lariat, one of, there's a lariat towards the end by Nana. She just mm -hmm. took Walker's head off just smashed her and then hit a backdrop driver for two like just that just bang and it just mm -hmm. i just the way she took her head off with that clothes and then the backdrop driver it just she was just like wrecking the girl 
man. It was brutal. But yeah. But that Waka, though, she's that little girl that just takes a licking and keeps on ticking. She gets right back up every single time, and she always seems to do it with a smile. Oh, yeah, very much so. Mm-hmm. Like, she, it, it, it's even like after this match, Nane gave her props. Like, she mm-hmm. did. Like, she, she wasn't like, wasn't as much as what would come on the next night, but she gave mm-hmm. her props after a little bit of props after it. And Waka could leave with her head, like, head up. And like, she, she fought and fought and fought in mm-hmm. this match. And I can't, I cannot wait till she actually gets her win, finally gets mm-hmm. the win somewhere down the road because I know coming out of these two, two shows, there's an ultimatum for Waka mm-hmm. that she has mm-hmm. to win. I can't remember by a certain point or she's out of Cosmic of Angels. Three months was her uh, time limit in December. Yeah, so I she has the end of the end of March. Yeah, so she's only got another two months. And it's like mm-hmm. it's like, come on, you gotta work, you gotta keep going. Yeah, yeah. And and you know, who knows what will happen with that. Maybe she can uh, if she does happen to get kind of booted from there, maybe Mina will have a, a spot for her on Club Venus. Or maybe she becomes Donna Del Mundo. Because she she seemed to catch like we'll talk about it on the next one, but she's got some respect. Yeah, we'll get there.